Hi, my name is John Myung. I play bass for a band called Dream Theater. Um, and welcome to my first instructional video. I'd like to grow the tuning of the six string bass, which is very simple. The middle four strings are exactly identical to a four string bass, tuned from E to G in fourths, E, A, D, G. And the six string bass is just merely an extension of the four string bass by adding a string, a fourth above the G string, which will give you C, and a fourth below the E string, which will give you a low B. And for those of you that want to play along with me, I'll just go over the open string tunings real quick. First, I'll do B. Second will be E. Third is A. Then D. Then G. And finally, C. A big part of my playing is definitely working with chords. A way that I practice working with chords is by creating patterns from the arpeggios of different chords and applying each pattern to a cycle of fifths progression. I have 14 different patterns which will be applied to four basic chord types which are major 7, minor 7, dominant 7, and diminished 7th. Each pattern will start in the key of C. Pattern 1 going root to root. Pattern two, root to third. Pattern three, root to fifth. Pattern four, root to major seventh. Pattern five, root to root, descending.
pattern six, root to third, descending. Pattern seventh, root to fifth, descending. Pattern eight, root to seventh, descending. Pattern nine, third to third, ascending. Pattern 10, 5th to 5th, ascending. Pattern 11, 7th to 7th, ascending. Pattern 12, third to third, descending. Pattern 13, 5th to 5th, descending.
14th pattern, 7th to 7th descending. The next chord is the minor 7th chord type, starting in the key of C, pattern 1. Pattern 2. Pattern three. Pattern four. Pattern five. Pattern 9. Pattern 10.
pattern 11. Pattern 12. Pattern 13. Finally, pattern 14. The next two chords, I'll only be playing the first four patterns of each chord that are in your booklet, and you can work the others out on your own. Um, I know this stuff is very boring. It could definitely be um, time consuming and not a very fun thing to do, but it will make a difference when it comes to playing over chord changes. Then you'll be glad you did it. So here we go. Dominant seventh chord, pattern one. Pattern two. Pattern three.
And then finally, pattern four. Diminished seventh chord, pattern one. Pattern two. Pattern three. Pattern four. What I'd like to do now is just apply the patterns that I've shown you to a blues progression in the key of C for four courses.
Now what I'd like to do is apply chords as chords rather than as arpeggios. I'm using the chords that are listed in the video booklet and I have the list of changes that I use for this particular song that I've named Solar Groove. It's in a 4-4 time feel and in the middle of the song I'm using the concept of playing odd meters within a 4-4 time signature by taking four measures, actually three measures of four, four time, which is 12 beats, and breaking that into four measures of 3-4. Also at the end of the piece I'm using bass harmonics to form chords at the end. So here we go. I'd like to talk a little bit about scales now. Scales are a great way to develop dexterity and strength in your hands through just playing any type of scale in all 12 keys. I'd like to um, show you my approach to scales.
My approach to scales has been to connect two, three, or four octave scales by thinking them in by thinking them as a bunch of modes connected to each other to form these scales. Um, it's a little hard to explain, so let me show you what I mean. If I were to play a four octave C major scale, I would do that by combining the first six notes of Ionian. Then rather than going to Dorian, I go backwards to Locrian, play the first six notes of Locrian, then play the first six notes of Aeolian, and then play the first six notes of Mixolydian. So I'm thinking of the diatonic modes, but I'm going in a descending order when I'm thinking about ascending in a four octave major scale. Okay, so let me show you exactly what I mean when I play a four octave C major scale. I start with the low C, and I think of the first six notes of the Ionian mode. Then I think of the first six notes of Locrian. Then the first six notes of Aeolian. Then the first six notes of Mixolydian. And extend to give me the fourth octave of C. And think the same way going back down. Mixolydian to Aeolian to Locrian back down to Ionian. Now, moving to the second degree, the C major scale, um, I'll play a three octave scale, starting with the Dorian mode. And this is the way I would think it out. I would start with first six notes of Dorian, then the first six notes of Ionian, then the first six notes of Locrian, and extend to get the octave, and then think the same way back down. Now moving to the natural third of the scale, I would start with the Phrygian mode and play a three octave scale, starting with the first six notes of Phrygian, then the first six notes of Dorian, then the first six notes of Ionian, and extend, I believe it's an extra four notes on top of the six to get the octave that you started on. And then think the same way back down. And now starting on the fourth degree, which will give me the Lydian mode, the first six notes of Lydian, to the first six notes of Phrygian, to the first six notes of Dorian, and extend it. With Mixolydian, to Lydian, to Phrygian. Now moving to Aeolian, Mixolydian, Lydian, almost. And now doing a four octave B Locrian scale, I would think the same way. But this time, uh, the, the, the B is within the uh, Ionian mode position. So I would think Ionian and just approach it with a low B. And then I would go from the first six notes of this mode right here, which is basically an Ionian pattern with starting with a low B, and then go up to the Locrian. Finally, back to C. I rely on this method of playing scales, this sort of backwards modal approach to playing scales, because it provides a consistent way for me to look at scales and to stay in key regardless of where I am on the bass neck.
I'd like to talk about base harmonics for a little bit. They've been a very valuable tool for me. I look at them almost as another instrument within the bass guitar. The harmonics that I mainly work with are the first eight natural harmonics. I'll show you the first eight positions for the C string, and then you can later apply them to the rest of the strings since the positions are relative. The first harmonic on the C string would be at the 12th fret, which gives the root harmonic of the string C an octave higher. The second harmonic would be at the 9th fret, which will give you a natural third of string, which in this case would be E. The third harmonic will give you the natural fifth of the string, which in this case would be G at the 7th fret. The fourth harmonic will be the root harmonic C again, this time two octaves higher on the 5th fret. Then, right below the 4th fret, you'll get the natural third of the string, which would be E two octaves higher. Then right above the third fret, you get the natural fifth of the string again, which would be G, two octaves higher. Then right below the third fret, you'll get the flat seven of the string, which would be B flat. Then right above the second fret, you get the root harmonic again, C, three octaves higher. So you have all these harmonics here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to choose from. And the positions are relative to the other strings. So I can, in one position, just rake out a whole bunch of notes. All those to choose from. And it definitely helps to know where they, where they sit on the bass knife. Because for instance, just through experience, I know that if I play A here, and the two uh, um, harmonic notes above that, give me a minor seven chord sound. So all along here, I have a stack of minor seven chord sounds. And down here in second position, I know that I have the same type of chord sound and type, just with higher harmonics. With the addition of B flat, actually D flat minor seven. I'd like to play an example of using these harmonics and incorporating them in a, into a bass groove. second example, I'll use a dream theater song called Lifting Shadows Off a Dream, where the song starts off with bass harmonics forming the chords B at 11 to G major 7 flat 5. And it goes like this. I'd like to talk a little bit about left-hand technique. There's a run in a Dream Theater arc song called The Change of Seasons that's actually a pretty good left-hand workout. It goes like this. It's a 16th note pattern that starts with the ring finger and uses the pinky and the index. And then the pattern alternates, and the ring finger goes out, and the middle finger comes in. So it goes like this. <laughs> And just doing that at various tempos 
after a while, your, your hand starts to hurt. And, and that's what I do every now and then to uh, build up my left hand strength. Another left hand exercise that you could do to strengthen your hand is actually working on trills. This is actually something that John Petrucci showed me a long time ago. Um, it's just eight different combinations. The first combination is the index in the middle. And you do that for about a minute. Then you move on to the next combination, which is index and ring. And you do that for about a minute. And then index and pinky. Then the next combination is middle and ring. Then the next combination is middle and pinky. And then the next combination is, which would be, I believe, the sixth combination, would be the ring and the pinky. Then the seventh would be index, middle, and pinky finger. Then the eighth, finally, would be index, ring, and pinky. Another exercise that builds left hand technique would be doing something as simple as a diminished seventh pattern across the strings and moving up the neck chromatically and down. I'd like to talk a little bit about right hand technique. The right hand technique um, fingerings that I use are <clears throat> three different fingerings. One would be my index and middle, the second would be my index and my ring, and then my third would be using all three. A way that I build them up would be to apply them to a, a pentatonic scale and keep each combination in for uh, two different positions of that scale and then switch. So I'll show exactly what I mean. I'll start with um, C pentatonic using the index and middle. Now I'll switch to index and ring. switch to all three. When it comes to tapping, I don't really do a whole lot. But when I do do it, I usually think of chords when I apply my tapping. There's a, a bass solo in a song called Metropolis where I do a bass solo. And it's just consisting of a series of add 11 chords going up a G major scale starting on the major 7, which would be F sharp. So it's just, it's just, it's just a 16th note pattern with, with the 32nd note with two 30-second notes, and it sounds like this. Now, to break that down, 
all it is is just four different octaves, four, four different roots, with the fourth in it, or 11. So real slow, it's... Another type of tapping that I'd like to do, that I like to do, is tapping out chords in the context of a groove. There's a song called Scarred where the bass intro is just tapping out a series of B chords. B minor 7 to B minor 6 to B root 5th to B at 11. And then repeating itself. So this is what it sounds like. We're now approaching the end of the video. I hope this video had something to offer you. It was a great learning experience for me to, to do, having never done this sort of thing before. I'd like to end with the jam in 5-8, with Mike and Derek accompanying me in this jam. And I'm going to be combining some of the ideas that we had talked about, like applying core tones and, and modes and things like that. Take care. God bless.